Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of AM Ohm. I'm your host Z, joined as always by Sun Yoga Win Lung and our special guest today, Jade Raider, Jade Raider, Master Energy Alchemist. How are you doing today, Jade? I'm great, Z. Aloha, everyone. Cool. Aloha. Aloha. So off, what were we talking about off camera? We were talking about uh, sound, light, light, sound, and movement. movement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What is that? Well, <laughs> when we're working to raise our consciousness and our expanded self connection, when we consider our words as light the sound or resonance that you're connecting into as the broadness of it and then movement, which can be as easy as the breath, connecting together and creating one essence, we are able to so easily move ourselves into a different experiential plane of energy. And then we could talk about, you know, how there's 1,728 quantum timelines we could grab in any given moment mm. by potential possibility mm. and probability. <clears throat> Would you say that's for individuals to live or is that for the mass reality to live? Both, Both. and. Both and, right? Both and. So yeah. people are experiencing uh, different timelines on this planet. Uh, oh, yeah. Different outcomes to situations they're seeing. I love that concept when it came to me that you could raise your vibration to a point where you were not experiencing the same situation that other people thought were a catastrophe. You now saw as a, a, a movement that needed to happen for so. This, that possibility um, really blew my mind when I, when I realized that that was a possibility. In my experience, and that's where I come from, I'm an experiences first. I've got a lot of training behind me, but really what I've lived through, like you're speaking of, mm -hmm. is what really allowed me to embody it. And mm -hmm. for me, embodiment is where the ability to live what we've learned comes in. You know, we can read it, we can hear it, we can learn about it, uh, we can train in it, but until we actually get through the blocks that hold us out of living it, mm -hmm. not just once or twice or even three times or two weeks or 21 days, like as an innateness of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we allow ourselves to know that in each moment, each decision has so many possible, probable, and potential outcomes, and it's our choice where we plug in energetically to that. Um, Abraham Hicks, which Esther has been um, channeling the collective energy of Abraham for over 30 years, I believe. Mm -hmm. They talk about as a collective, and it's a group of energy that I've channeled my whole life. I just didn't have their name. Mm -hmm. It's one of the many groups that we all have access to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to up choose the next feeling. So if I'm feeling down, I can choose to feel okay. And from okay, I can f choose to feel good. And from go mm -hmm. good, I can choose to feel better. Instead of trying to leap from down to mm -hmm. bliss filled. You know, which seems like such a stretch for the emotional body mm -hmm. that when we just step it up, and one of the easiest ways to step up energy is music. Mm. Absolutely. The easiest I have ever found is, <laughs> is sound. And oh, yeah. especially when you can connect into the resonance of the person creating mm. that sound. Mm. Um, I've had the opportunity, my sweetheart is totally into to music, and we have Tidal, and Tidal is a streaming platform that you can actually hear the different, you can hear the organ, you can hear the percussion, you can hear the vocals, and I can literally separate that energy in it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things with the compressed music that we have is, is that it's kind of a single resonance coming at us, mm -hmm. but we're multidimensional in so many ways. Um, as easy as mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. but as complex as 
earth beings, starlight beings, mm. and beyond. So this is all always a good time. So thanks so much for letting me come and play. <laughs> I love what you were bringing up about bringing in the, the more real version of input, which is all around. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I love painting in live situations like at these shows, because I've learned to f be more present and to open on all levels like a reverse lighthouse yeah. um, when I'm at these events, because I actually have social anxiety. I used to, let me say, and I've learned to, just like we're talking about, adjust my perspective to have what happens benefit me and to look a different way and to, to build me back. Mm -hmm. And so now the way I like to create gets exponentially charged. I mean, at these events, I'm entertaining many possibilities at once and choosing little bits to show. You know, it's like, okay, I want some of this to show, these people in this event, this movement, these characters. And then <clears throat> as I'm going, I make all these little decisions like this will have this other bit here. Yeah, they're dancing, but it's just going to look like this. It's just going to show movement. And um, I personally love uh, art, conversation, reality, where it's got a little bit of everything and a little bit of reality, but not like all 100% exact, that's what it looks like reality. You know, it's oh, like, from your perspective. Because yes, in the kaleidoscope exactly, yeah. of everyone, yeah. we're, all, we're all sitting here, and if we looked around this room, we would each key on something separate. Mm -hmm. We may go to the same piece. There's beautiful art in this room that you might not be able to see all of. But we could go to the same piece and within that piece find something different. Mm -hmm. So I love what you're saying mm -hmm. that instead of going into that that phobial energy of social anxiety, like this is too much, you went the other way and went, look what I can see. Mm -hmm. So you turn the kaleidoscope around and brought yourself into all of those possibilities. I have connection bumps all over mm -hmm. because that's the way to turn things around. That's alchemy right yeah. there. Um, people think of alchemy of like turning physical material led into gold, we can alchemize energy in a way that allows us to turn an unhappy day into a happy day for ourselves. It's a choice. Um, I, one of my, my coaches way back was named Brian Buffini, and his mantra was, it's a good life. And I, me, I'm upgrading it. I'm like, it's a great life. And he goes, Jade, the day your grandmother dies isn't a great, day, a great life that day, but it's still a good life. Mm. He's like, so if you look at it and your if your life is a good life, even when a big challenge or loss happens, life's still good. Mm. Uh -huh. And I was like, all right, I get where he's going with this, giving us a set point, an energetic mm -hmm. look into a day. Wow. It brings a little more light onto a quote. I have a book, uh, The Greatest Thousand Quotes or some Harper's book quotations, and one said, uh, the great is the enemy of the good. And I always looked at that like, but aren't we supposed to be great? And what does that mean? And But that brings more of that middle ground good. Um, and then Henry David Thoreau's quote of, uh, to affect the quality of the day is the highest of the arts stepping up. Mm. So that when I heard that, to be able to take a day where you wake up and it's like you're done already, right? And to be able to end the day with like, wow, look, I was able to take that challenge I was given or situations and... and slowly step it up i also really love that rather than trying to jump from depressed to bliss because you know bliss is possible but how do i get there you know but just going you know what i'll start let me take a walk mm. and then yeah. from a walk let me take a let me let me you know that was me <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought i muted it <laughs> but uh you know like so take a walk and that's a step into good and then the next step might be you know now let me go mm. do this and that takes you a little bit further and all of a sudden you know, that's a really great model to think you don't have to go from I don't want to be here today to where where is the happiness that I'm like, just like slow steps. Exactly. And then the lack goes away. Mm. James, there's not the well, I don't have a blissful memory because people when I work with people, sometimes they'll you'll ask them to access an energy that they've experienced before to bring it back in to the present moment so that they then can have a visceral memory of it mm -hmm. that is sensory to them mm -hmm. and they'll say i've never been there mm -hmm. and then you say to them can you imagine mm -hmm. and they say no mm -hmm. and it's like okay mm -hmm. i paid great money for a training one time and what i took out of that training in three months was ask them to pretend mm -hmm. could you pretend could you make a movie right now mm -hmm. 
where you pretend that that's happening. Mm. And then you can get into it. You know, um, people will say, fake it till you make it. I was sitting in Kundalini yoga class one day and I heard, no, it's faith it till you make it. Mm. It's having faith in yourself that you can actually access that mm. kind of energy. So when you're in that inner faith, it mm. just lights you completely up. That's right. Mm. Now, if you'd allow me, there's something I do in the morning that just came through a little while ago. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting these two young men, and this one I know quite well, um, just a month, month and a half ago. Yeah, it was. And since then, I've decided to be a happy human. So mm -hmm. I know I'm a starlight being having a human experience, and then you have, you know, you're a, you're a spiritual being having a human experience. And I was pretty tired of being human. I've never been one of those that wanted off the planet, mm -hmm. but I was, I was tired of it. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, well, it's your choice, Jade. I self-coach a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're around me, I talk to myself, I talk to the trees, I talk to the grass, talk to the sun. I mean, it's a good time. But you're, um, <laughs> you know, I'm like, if you decide to be a happy human being, then what happens? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, it doesn't take away from being a starlight being or a, in the, any other thing that you connect into that brings you joy, mm -hmm. a musician, an mm -hmm. artist, um, any of that. But when you decide to be a happy human being, and by the way, happy is an inside job, <laughs> that's a lot to take in. The mm. first time I took it in, it was literally on a little sticker from Mount Shasta that said, happiness is an inside job. If you go out mm. to my car, it's right <laughs> above my door handle. So if I get into that vehicle to drive, I remember happiness is an inside job mm. while I'm in traffic, right? Like it's my job to be the happy person driving down the road. Mm -hmm. And so when I wake up in the morning, um, love is an energy that for me is a unification energy. So that pure love from true creation, um, whatever that is for you, I respect everybody's path and where they're at and what they connect into. The best words I have today are true creation for me. Mm -hmm. And so I ask from true creation to connect from love, to see from love, to experience from love, to speak from love, to to send, because we broadcast energy. We don't consider this. We always talk about, especially empathic and sensitive people, we talk about taking other people's energy on. We broadcast it uh -huh. too. And we're rock stars. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're receivers and transmitters mm -hmm. as electric beings here in a collective of electric beings on mm -hmm. an electric planet, which we could go way out there on. So as you're broadcasting, feel from it, walk from it, talk from it, step in it, and when you do that, and it can be anything you choose. I mean, I remember years ago where I wanted certainty, which is the biggest laugh I've ever had at this point. <laughs> when my, my mind thought I wanted to be certain. Mm -hmm. So I walked in certainty. And you know what? I began to trust myself more. Mm -hmm. So it did serve me. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I'm aware that uncertainty is a place of more probability and possibility and potential. So I live there. I call it iridescent sparkles. Mm -hmm. Because I come from the world of black and white. Mm -hmm. So... I'm from northern Minnesota. Yeah, sure, you betcha, don't you know? 30 miles east of Fargo, and that was the city I was born in and the high school I graduated from. So um, I come from what I saw as very constricted. Mm -hmm. Now I go home, mm -hmm. and I'll bring my voice back into Colorado. <laughs> uh, I spent 20 years there also. So I go back to where I grew up, and now I see people that are aware, awakened, because my perspective of home changed. So when I set up my day to be in love, I have a day filled with love, a day of being a happy human. Whatever you really want to create, when you remember that you are co-creating, either intentionally or by default, mm -hmm. and that default place is filled with pain and suffering in the victim consciousness of the third dimensional collective, um, and we're all moving out of that as together. In fact, today is 5-5, and there's a huge gateway of change, freedom, adventure, and travel that's mm -hmm. available. So if any of you are, are working on astral travel or in time travel, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. I would use today as that, because when you look at those gateways, those double numbers, it just, it opens an energy portal, because mm -hmm. we've chosen as a collective to give this day that mm -hmm. date, numerologically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything appears aligned. <laughs> I'm like, 
<laughs> I could talk uh, forever. You know, I love no. what we're I love what we're <laughs> yeah. talking about because we're speaking about the this world that at most artists live more rooted in. This place where it's not just like the third dimension, tactile pterodactyls packed full of actual like this and here and nowness, but like the space that we're alluding to by our experience. Like we can't really capture art only the remembrance of having tried to make it. And there's a line in one of my, another line in one of my poems, uh, which was, my focus alludes to the depth, mm. <clears throat> which speaks to um, this, this way of describing an existence or a reality that how and how I do it speaks more about me than what it is I'm doing. So I can be at McDonald's picking up trash, shaking someone's hand. I could be selling someone a painting. And how I'm doing it shows you my connection with my experience. Mm -hmm. And that's also where that's part of the roomy depth vibe. Mm -hmm. Our 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 mm -hmm. our vibe, our our message, our mantra, our name. Uh, it 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 really is about that place that you go to. That's kind of also invisible. That it's like when echo locating in this other layer. That's the furthest we can go. You know, and it's it's like the edge of the planter, and we're you know we're like okay, there we go, and it's like this and. There it is. There it goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like how you alluded to whatever you're doing, you can do it from the place of presence and consciousness that you are and what you're there to share. People will go, I, I need to know my purpose. I need to know my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, as a numerologist, I can give you a look at a direction of your energy, yet we're all here to help one another evolve in my experience. And I don't care if you're digging a ditch, checking someone out at the grocery store, if you are um, cleaning toilets, if you are doing it from a place of heart-centered um, connection to yourself first, this is, this is a big one. As we look at being a unified collective, our sovereignty is important mm. to hold our unification inside to get the microcosm of us at a place where the macrocosm of us is in a better place. That's right. And it's interesting because inside me, because I have a very strong mind, um, it's like how do I be an individual sovereign and a unity sovereign? And so personally, I've had to call it personal sovereignty mm. and collective sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And with that, it gave me, as I hold my personal sovereignty energy, then it contributes mm -hmm. to the collective sovereignty, mm -hmm. which is really helpful in getting us all into that unification place. So I use the word aloha, uh, and I use it on purpose. Uh, the, when I first stepped into the path of ancient Hawaiian la'aukahea in this lifetime, which I know I just said something sounding very foreign, foreign it's really about personal consciousness, evolution, and healing. Um, it's part of the Huna, which is the secret learnings of the ancient Hawaiians mm. that connects into Lumeria. So yeah, <laughs> it can we can keep going, but what it is, aloha to me really experientially is unity. Mm. And no one really talks about it like that. But I had the pleasure of taking a small group through a deep clearing to their living in their own aloha. Mm -hmm. And their experiences when they came back to me, which is always where I get the best data, I'm a researcher by experience, was that they felt unified with the bugs and the trees and the plants mm -hmm. and the people and the couch and <laughs> the car. They're like, I have never felt so much oneness. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I believe in my experience that that's truly what aloha is, is to be in that oneness of all is. That's how it means so many things, and since because it's open ended, it's it is completely unified. It in is so many different what, in the ways you use it. Absolutely. When I was uh, younger and getting into my philosophical state of thinking, um, I was thinking about how we're a part of a society, but we're individuals. So it all becomes down to the paradox. I almost <laughs> thought I was waiting for you to call it an Aloha paradox kind of. <laughs> by, it, it, it's the so, uh, the solo sovereignty with the collective sovereignty. By working on your solo sovereignty, you actually are affecting the greater sovereignty, Absolutely. which is the paradox. By working on the individual, you actually are helping the collective. And I realized as individuals, 
if you don't know you're an individual or you do mm -hmm. not understand your effect on your surroundings, you're going to go out there and do things and just knock things over and be affecting people and stuff, but not understand that you are directly responsible for some of this action you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that by pulling back and realizing, well, I do affect things. I, I, so what can I do? Once you realize you're the individual, you can start to make conscious choices on, well, did that work? And then you become the scientist, right? You know, then you go, well, I didn't know. And you can start to see how you can play in society. And then all of a sudden, now as an individual, you can participate in a true society where we as individuals can come together and work together. And that was like when I was 19, 20, about 20 something years ago, when those thoughts started coming into my head, I said, there's something else going on here. You know, Absolutely. I didn't read this in a book. This is coming through me in some way. I know it's not all mine. The first group I was in called Mega J's, our, our foundation theory was um, standing firm on loose foundation. You talked about uncertainty. <laughs> it was like, well, there is no if once you get comfortable with the fact there is no solid ground, then you're playing in reality where anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when I started to embrace those things, that's why I freestyle all the time. That's why I freestyled for the first 10 years because I realized that that's where the that strongest chord will come from. Well, and you had a frame when you freestyled that you had music, yes. and that's what you were doing. You mm -hmm. had an audience, yep. and you had instruments. Mm -hmm. So when you've got a frame... You can freestyle so many things. Like, mm -hmm. this is freestyle. Yes. We didn't have a conversation about what will we speak of. Mm -hmm. In fact, our pre-talk, Z is like, hey, like, um, <laughs> that would be really good. And I'm like, yeah, more will come. It'll be all good. I have yeah. no idea what we're going to talk about. So you brought up another piece in how we affect the whole. And as the sensitive people, so the generation of millennials, I love. Um, as a Gen Xer, I'm just barely not a baby boomer. Um, you know, a lot of people get frustrated because y'all don't play by the rules that we were given, that we bought, chewed, swallowed, and took in as as truth. Mm -hmm. um, you go more by experience, and from that experience, create your own rules, and from your own rules, live your own truth. That's right. Now, we're waking up the planet as a group. So I always tell the millennials, I love you and you're welcome from the baby boomers and the Gen Xers who cleaned up a lot of junk so that you could come in in that freedom. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that you are all here doing it. And I don't even know what the next generation has gotten. I'm sure someone has labeled them, but they have even less of the heaviness mm -hmm. to trudge out of, to mm -hmm. be in their true freedom. The young kids right now. They, they just walk around in that awakened state, which helps us all. Mm -hmm. mm. And the new ideas and the new ways and the technology that has probably been created in the past, if we're going to be linear about it, that has got to come back to now to get us back. We Everyone here in some of the different things that I've studied and multiple different lineages will tell you we're a minimum of a seventh dimensional reality being embodied into a human being participating in the earth plane right now that is running, if you're looking at the law of one, a lot of second density. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're looking at another view, third dimensional consciousness, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's really up-leveling everything to love and learning from what we've experienced. And that's what I do love about the millennial generation is you don't take it as a failure. You go, okay, that didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it this way. And then you do it that way, where a lot of my generation and the generation before me would stop because we coded it as failure equals stop. Mm -hmm. You guys code it differently, which I adore. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot more freedom in your fields to connect into things with less ruling limitations, which mm -hmm. we could call limiting beliefs or whatever you want to call them, but less construct and less mm -hmm. constriction. I felt that immediately when I was young, coming into hip-hop and finding myself philosophically was uh, the rules had no mm. no um, hold on me. And, and that's what a lot of people, my especially family and stuff, didn't appreciate was my lack of attention for the rules that were supposedly supposed to be so important, you know? And I came in like a fire element, Ray One, Destructo Bunny, like, I don't want to burn you guys' house down, but... 
I, it's an option. You brought me here. You brought me here. You, you know, my first my first line on my first album was, I was evoked from the prayers of past generations. That's the first line of my album, my very first album ever. And wow. I realized that when I was sitting in a truck eating a Subway sandwich at lunch one time as a uh, delivery parts guy for, a, for a, my dad's deliv- um, auto parts store. Thank God. And I was sitting there and I'm going... You know, I, I think I saw someone like yelling at someone, being angry, and I was like working on my music, trying to be positive, doing my thing, and I'm like, why do I get to be happy? Why do I think that I have something to give? Huh. You know, why me? Like, why do I think this? Why do I? Why am I not? Why don't I have a kid yet? Why don't I have two jobs? And why am I not drinking alcohol and beating my wife? That that's what I ask because I'm trying to figure out. That's what seems to be the wildness, the neurosis of our area, which is this non like peace state and why do I feel that I can attain this and the and it hit me oh my gosh I was called in by the older generations in the 50s that were praying like please help this planet please you know all the prayers to God all the prayers of save us please help us like called in the next generations as we do to the next generation Absolutely. and someone called us in and I was born in 1976 so re- aligned with the revolutionary spirit and all that I always felt like we were, I was called in, you know, evoked from the prayers of mm. past generations. Awoken as a sayer to cast affirmations. And that was, that was what I thought it was, and that's what we're here to do. You know, and, and now 23 years later, sitting here having these kind of conversations from that Subway sandwich in a, in a truck, you know, in Merced, California, just validates everything that I've ever thought. And, and I would have never guessed we would have jumped into seventh dimension, light work, movement, you know? Like, I thought I was already talking God and love and higher dimensions. 23 years later, to be talking about other constructs and picking up different time realities, you know, those were just the science, the science fiction movies we watched. Well, and we laid the, we laid the ground, right, with those. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, there are so right. many things I watch, and I go, whoa, we're divulging it to the masses. Yes. Uh-huh. They just have no <laughs> conscious idea, but it's getting put into the field. Mm-hmm. So whether you call it your unconscious or your subconscious, I call it your body mind. Um, if we're talking about the brain, mm. that there is a subconscious aspect of that, and mm. that's the reptilian brain that's reactive. But when we're talking about um, energy minds... Your body mind is connected to everything, including your higher consciousness or your higher self, whatever you're going to call that construct, the drop down that allows you to have the purest information coming through and supporting you. You know, when you get those kind of messages, those are the the clear messages from your higher self telling you your why, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and like a lot of people haven't had the experience of being everything. I've had that a number of times in a number of ways. One of the times, just watering my plants in the front of my place. I'm watering a bush, and all of a sudden, I see the earth like a single-cell organism, and everything, everyone on the earth is like running around, and there's fast things moving that are the cars. So everyone is an individual of the one organism, which we know, Mm -hmm. right? And we're told, and maybe we can feel about it in the meditation. But when I experienced it, at that point, I don't have a choice but to live. Like my movement matters to the next movement and to really get out of all of those constructs of mine and yours. Um, and in, and in business, I literally had to move it to a mission because mm. I built a big construction business with a lot of work and adrenal exhaustion and push, 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 push myself and others. Mm-hmm. And when you go into doing from being, which is actually what you're talking about all the time when either of you is speaking mm-hmm. about that place of the presence being in action mm-hmm. instead of the doer. That's right. And in 2002, I had a great um, body-centered psychotherapist, and I used to call him my dot shaman. I had a feather shaman, dot shaman, and a Hawaiian shaman at that time. Um, you don't need that many people. Millennials know better. But Generation X, and <laughs> baby boomers, we, we fixed from the outside in instead of the inside out. Mm. So I'm all about inside out work and getting everyone to work inside, whether mm. they have a guide like I do for with people, but it's an inside job. So the inside work is where it gets done. But I walked up to his door and he looked me in the eye and he goes, you've got it. And I'm standing there 
I'm thinking, well, I have a lighter color shirt on than normal, and I have a flowered skirt. Maybe he means I'm being more feminine because I have a very strong personality. And so a lot of people saw me very, Mm -hmm. you know, masculine energy. And I'm like, maybe that's what he means. I stand there, and I'm like two minutes early. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's because I'm early. Mm-hmm. And I'm normally running late and really, really fast. And I'm quieter. And he goes, no, you're actually being. And I had to stand there for like five minutes to absorb the energy of being present. Because I was taught you do so that you have enough so that you can retire and be. Mm-hmm. Can be yet. You can be. Yeah. Right? You can be after you've done after all you've of done. this. Mm-hmm. And what I feel that a lot of Generation X and, and a ton of the millennials and younger get is that you don't have to do. Mm-hmm. You first have to be. Wow. And so the true magic in my experience is to be from be, do what you're inspired to do. From there, having happens. Mm. You aren't going after the thing. It isn't, I need the pencil. Mm. It's, I'm asking for movement. And however that movement comes, it comes. But you're being with the movement. It's how you talk about doing your art. Absolutely, Miles. Like, and how you talk about bringing, you know, sound in the moment, in the moment. Because it's it's be first. Mm -hmm. And quieting the mind is where the magic of being is allowed to bloom. Now, I have two super intellects over here that I know for sure. He's got plenty of that going on, too, but it tends to be in rhyme at the same <laughs> oh, time. Oh, you're talking about you guys. I was talking about these two first, like, and then yeah. you, your third. Yeah. Um, but I knew these that was a possibility. First. I just kept nodding. <laughs> just kept nodding. Well, the, one of the first things I said to my daughter, who is, is Zach's um, fiance, is she said he's very mindful, and I said, well... When he understands blowing his mind is the most mindful thing he can do, it'll be a different life experience. And, yeah, he's like, did you ever say that to me? I did say that to you probably the first time I ever met you. Um, yet have said so many things. <laughs> <laughs> and I've integrated as many as possible. Well, the cool thing is they're in the field and whenever it's the right time, mm. it doesn't even have to be for me. A lot of times it'll be triggered yeah. from some, maybe yeah. maybe James will rap it, maybe Triple say it at work. Mm. Who knows what'll happen, right? Yeah. Like it just happens and then you go, oh, the that same. realization comes. Awareness is just step one. The same message can be delivered a hundred times before you actually hear mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, and so many different ways. It's so, a brain tumbler. It's like all the little pieces have to line up. Yeah, the gray mattered key masters have to. You have, have you to ever know had them happen ready. where you feel it drop into your body like that? Uh, to understand a thought. To understand, actually, for me, it was a concept. Mm-hmm. It was around judgment. Can I tell mm-hmm. this story real quick? Oh yeah. Sure. So I'd been working on getting out of judgment of self and others for about eighteen months. Like one of my big focuses on a daily basis. When I'd see something, I'd be stop. That's a judgment. Can you just allow them to be who they are? Mm-hmm. Like step back. You're, you're putting your belief system into their field enough. So I'm in a training with the man I mentioned earlier, Brian Buffini, and he's on the stage and he goes, you know, I learned something about judgment and my ears are just like, whoa, okay, what has he got to say? He's bringing a message through. And it was, we judge others based on their behavior We judge ourselves based on our intentions. Mm. Didn't you read that in the Dr. Joe Dispenza book? Speaking to my wife, Karen. Absolutely. That exact situation that we do not give others the same Mm -hmm. uh, leeway we give ourselves. Mm. We wouldn't put it on ourselves that hard, even though, you know, maybe if you're checking yourself, you're you're, you're working on it, right? If you're listening to my judging. But that we're so quickly to be like that, but then yeah, we don't we give others the same benefit of the doubt yeah. that we give ourselves or the same Grace. You know, understanding or Yeah. You know. Clear water credence. Yeah. yeah, so that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean what what's so interesting is I literally felt like the cogs of a huge clock clicking into place mm. that I was judging others only from the outside in what they were doing in that moment or what I felt from what they were doing or what I perceived or Mm -hmm. thought they meant by what they were doing. I wasn't 
asking them, what's your intention with this behavior towards me? That's right. I wasn't allowing them. So allowance mm-hmm. to me, this came, my friend Deb and I were talking a couple months ago. My definition of allowance is to accept without judgment what is. And that one can expand some neuronaps, mm-hmm. neurosynapses. But <laughs> I just shorten it. People yeah, go, Jade, like that's that. not what it's called. <laughs> no. And I'm like, well, those neurons that were taking a nap, we You're woke the right them place. up. Yes. Yeah. I'm we like, we need up. this language. Yeah. I'm like, language. yeah, I have Jade's <laughs> language. Um, a lot of it. There's Jadeisms that happen. There's someone wrote a whole 12 pages that, of that's what That's your I rap say. name, Jade's language. <laughs> <laughs> Jade Raider is pretty good too, though. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, uh, a second ago we were talking about the. Uh, sorry to bring it back in. Bring it. We're bringing it back. Uh, you know, we're talking about like we're we're actually speaking to it without pointing pointing directly to it, but like building off of what's before. Mm-hmm. You know, you're saying you're welcome and thank you, and what what younger generations and older generations have, and it's such a beautiful um, telling. It's a description of the Earth's growth as one mechanism in itself and the evolution of it. Because, like, you know, our my grandparents, you know, struggled to get here from Sweden. And then they had a different mentality. And my my parents saw that mentality and on some level rebelled where they could. And then I came forth from them. And I think it's really cool the word scion not only means an heir, you know, a child, a, uh, but it also is a branch point in a tree. And we are, and you can like reverse engineer where our family came from by seeing who we are. Because mm-hmm. the branch comes and it steps off of where it came from. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's really interesting to try to understand things deeper, you know, to, to walk around the shape of something, to entertain more possibilities, to see what would a good day look like if it started bad, you know. Not great, but how could I, I could do that. Well, how would I feel if I was doing that? And then go, oh, let me just do that instead of wondering. Right. All this, the invisible thought alchemy and, and then building off of something. Yeah, and so that's a beautiful point, Miles, thought alchemy. Mm. That's only the beginning. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, in my experience, I was a great thought alchemist until I was willing to be an action alchemist which is changing the um, emotional state beyond just the thought and then changing how I behaved, which is the actionable part of it. And without judgment, if you can start really going, okay, like you pointed out, James, if you could go out and take a walk and get into the energetics of nature, which has no resistance, Mm -hmm. it grows around the rock, Mm -hmm. it grows on the side of the mountain, it does whatever it does, and you can be an observer. So being able to witness yourself, which is what I do feel that the younger generations are willing to do, that a lot of the older generations weren't even given the opportunity Mm -hmm. to understand we could witness ourselves. Uh, We were in it, and we were of it, and we were whatever we were labeled. And Mm -hmm. um, the label busting... I will use labels to understand. So that's when I give something a label, it's for an understanding purpose only. Mm -hmm. And knowing that everything has more potential and possibility than whatever it is, um, is so helpful. So like you were talking about, you know, the child is more than the parent, right? You're, You're a new branch of what it is that that's still there, but, but you get to keep growing. Mm. And that, so that tree metaphor is amazing. And in Hawaii, the kumu is the tree. The teacher is the tree, the tree that holds and supports all of the branches of what are growing and expanding. So that's really cool. And we think um, hula also has kumus, right? They're the teacher who brings through the wisdom and the knowledge. But they're also, they're the roots of all that is. So it comes through and... What I'm seeing is more and more people allowing themselves to be their own teacher Mm -hmm. by their life experience Mm -hmm. and from that learning. So if you don't like the way your mother does something, then try it your way. Um, I mean, we'll see ourselves mirror our parental behaviors. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was talking with my 
uh, now son-in-law, my youngest daughter's husband, and he was telling me what was so different. He's a Hawaiian, and she's a Coloradan, and how different they were raised, and so how different their life view was. And as I was doing it, I was like, mine, her dad's, mine, her dad's, mine, mine, her dad's, her dad's. And I, I said, so understand these are things that she imprinted into her mm. her behavior, her belief system, and her understanding. Now it can be changed by her. Mm-hmm. And you bringing it to her awareness can allow her to make the choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was I like, saw that. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> Something locked into place. You're not going to lose your keys yeah. now, I, I can yeah. tell. <laughs> you turned it the exact correct way. I wanted to there make sure I don't lose my keys. <laughs> thank you for it. You're welcome. Thank you. My hands are alchemists. I don't know what's going on consciously. No idea. You know, I was thinking about that. You know how they talk about the, the hands are the, the idle hands of the devil's playground. I was thinking, you could say idle in a different way. Like it's idling, revving, like my idle hands. Well, <laughs> idling, they're burning out. These are each an element in Kundalini Yoga. These are each a planet. I mean, we could go mm-hmm. on how they can represent. But you know, if someone points a pointer finger at you, you feel fire. Mm. So in the elemental um, learnings, when you point this finger, <laughs> you holster. send fire, and you can feel it when someone dies. Shaka <laughs> is yeah. air and water; it chills you out, doesn't it? Just kind of spans you. We There's come up a reason. The West Coast Shaka. <laughs> My friend was playing this West Coast song. He lives on Maui, and I was like, West Coast. I was like, Oh, West, oh, the West, West Coast is West. Shaka. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to wiggle the whole thing. Wee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> a little less air, a little more water. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the hands are epic. I think it's cool how, like, you know, these have so many nerve endings and they've got all these little, you know, different grippers. And apparently in the, the palmistry, you know, like, there's something in regard to, like, what which hand you use is either what you do with what you came with or what you came with. I can't remember which one's which. Oh, it's interesting. That would be like iridology, where one eye has the heredity and the other eye has what you brought through your heredity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's... I, if you guys can get somebody like that to interview, it's super what was, interesting. What was that called again? Iridology. I, 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 how do you spell it? I, R, I don't know, darling. Okay, Iridology. Iridology, if you just, Google will tell you, Iridology. <laughs> I think it's I-R-E-U. I think it's I-R-E-U, yep, Iridology. So yeah. it's a it's a form of understanding what's going on in your physical body. So, like, when mm. my iridologist looked at my, she was an herbalist, too, looked at my right eye, it was my heredity. And she's like, whoa, you brought through a lot. And I said, yeah, but check out what, this is my heredity, right? This is what's possible. She goes, yeah. I go look at my other eye, and she goes, you didn't break, take any of it on. I said, yes, that was my <laughs> choice. I remember as a child when I would see someone had heart disease, I would be mm. like, um, you know, I'd be sad for them, and I'd choose a different path. Mm. I say a lot, mm. I choose a different path. Mm. I choose a different path. Mm. I choose a different path. That's a song, right? That's there. interesting yeah. you say that because l- lately in the last like five, six, seven years, I felt like I was kind of surrounded by people who had um, <laughs> diabetes issues, mm. blindness issues, different things, people that I had looked up to and artists and stuff, and I kept going, why am I being surrounded by these people with these issues? And I started thinking about, you know, how much sugar I've been taking. Where are you at with your health, James? You know what I mean? Like how this is, uh, from what I understand, life is showing you, you know, pay attention to these things. This might be something you want to think about or, you know, you might be choosing to follow that path. But I remember seeing those moments and going, okay, this is a choice to be made. How am I going to take this on? Because it is showing me something. This isn't an accident that these people keep coming into my life. Oh, absolutely. You know? Bruce Lipton will talk about how the charge of electricity based in your your science of your mind of in within the neurology, how you're sending that charge out from there. And um, it was very interesting because I had a lot of people in my immediate world um, when I was living on the mountain in Mount Shasta who didn't want to be here and would literally talk about suicide. Mm. But it was never a thought in my in my aware mind, yeah. okay? I'm on Hawaii and a uh, energy healer that I'm working with looks at me one day and goes, permission to tell you what I see. And I said, sure. She goes, you wanna keep that suicide thought form? And I go, tell me more. And she said, well, you have a big suicide thought form in your field. And I go, 
I don't think about suicide. She goes, are people around you talking about these things? And I said, oh, yeah. There's probably four or five people who just yeah. are done being here and talk about it a lot. And she goes, well, you need to get that out of your field because it's been imprinted out of their field. This is why what you listen to, what you talk about, who you listen to is so important because yeah. it overlays into your field. Um, intake association affirmations. What am I watching? What am I reading? Uh -huh. What am I listening to? Who am I hanging out with? Mm -hmm. And then what am I saying to myself and others? Because you're eavesdropping, your energy field, your inner child, your unihipili in Hawaiian is eavesdropping on everything you say. Mm -hmm. Everything you read and everything you watch. And it's eavesdropping on what other people say in groups. So even in the 1800s, they talk about thought forms. And this is, we have a lot of this happening in the collective. We have upset thought forms. We have anxious thought forms. That's one that I'm really personally um, striving to support the release of is the transcendence of the anxiety thought form. There are so many people because of shock and trauma in their lives that, that key into that anxiety piece, which is totally defeating because you've taken, you've placed fear in the future. You've been thinking about worry and you're experiencing that anxiety energy, mm -hmm. which makes you agitated, which brings you into a vibration or a resonance with other things that are agitating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it might create those type of things too. Huh? It does. You're absolutely. You're entertaining you, all you the will, possibilities you will of make, negativity. You can make it right yeah. then and there. Mm -hmm. If you're in a bad mood and you walk into a store and you can't find what you need and you can't find anyone to help you and you go and you yell at someone, guess what happens? You stay in that space. Mm. If you go in and you can't find what you need and you go, gosh, I can't find it. I know someone will help me. You'd be amazed that three people will walk up and say, did, did, you, need, did you need to find something? And you're like, yeah. And then they'll bring you to it usually, not even tell you where to go. They will take you to it. And it is, it's a resonance thing. And that's why when we talked earlier about just going up one better mm -hmm. feeling of your, whatever feels a little better for mm -hmm. you and just moving it up, you move up your experience. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. People come up and I can't find this. Why don't you have it? It should be here. I've gotten it here before, on and on and on. And I'll just stare at them and wait. And they'll finally say, well, aren't you going to say something? And I'll say, may I? And then they're deer in the headlights like, oh, yeah. And then I take them to it. Yeah. Like, I'd be happy to help you. You know, that reminds me of... for you to be ready. There reminds me of people who they approach with their problem rather than approaching with an openness for the answer. You know, there. That's, that, you know, that's, that that's shift like, right there. Yeah. I'm open for the answer. I don't care what you're asking yeah. for. I don't care who you're asking. Yeah. If you're asking, if you're asking the source, I, I would like the answer for this. It's going to come into your experience. Um, you know, personally, I right now have a friend who, um, the doctor said she was leaving in August. She's in a spot where she could be leaving now. Uh, trip three through um, ovarian cancer. This time chose to stay out of all types of intervention other than um, prayer and, mm -hmm. and energy work for herself because of how much it created dissonance in her life. Mm -hmm. She, um, make your one life count, mm -hmm. is a hashtag she created. And... You know, whatever is in her highest and best is what I hold. Personally, at this point, I experience someone leaving this existence as just a change of state. Mm -hmm. And that can seem really brass to people. But I went through the ballistic missile um, experience on Hawaii last mm -hmm. January. Ah, uh, that's right. My friend Petey was there too. Yeah, I was, right. I was there and that alert came on my phone mm -hmm. and my sweetheart's phone. He was visiting from here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And my first thought was, should we go to the ocean to uh. say goodbye? Because the water connects to everyone. So I was ready to jump in the car and drive to the ocean. Well, my beloved is pretty bright and he goes, uh, we don't have that long. You couldn't bend over and kiss your tail before it's here. If it's coming, it's, you got less than five minutes. But then I saw what happened. I saw it leave the atmosphere. So I was like, okay, it must not really be coming, but we'll see what happens. I said, what would you like to do? And he goes, I want to finish my coffee. And he loves his coffee. I'm like, okay. And I cleaned up the kitchen. We got in the car and we drove to 
the um, there's two farmers markets that happened on Saturday, one in the town we were in, and one north in Javi. So we drove to the north one, which is full of very conscious beings and full of a lot of people who love the earth and love the land and love each other and, uh. you know, grow fruit and it's happy, happy. I love it up there. And when we get there, everyone is there. Everyone with their little kids and their big kids and everyone's booth is full. And they're there on the drive. We got the notice that it was a mistake. Oh, it yeah. was a... Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yet... I didn't think to call my children. I didn't think to call my parents. I didn't think to call my brother. And that would be my immediate family. I thought, I'm at peace Uh. if this ends now. Oh, that is a different place to be. Now, eventually, I did a video (laughs) on Facebook with um, a helmet about you're at choice on how you react to any reactions during the day, including a ballistic missile Mm -hmm. reaction. And about four hours later, my parents called me Mm -hmm. and said, hey, your uncle said there was a, there was an alert and then it wasn't true and you got, you're good, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, go check out Facebook. (laughs) Great. I truly hadn't thought to go to them because I don't see the change of state being Mm -hmm. what I used to believe it to be. And so because that isn't such a big change of state, my goodness, going from, from, you know, exhausted to okay is a pretty easy shift. Mm -hmm. And when we look at that, how can we talk to that tree? I had a, I had a client go into a 10 day, um, yoga retreat, silent retreat. Mm -hmm. And she came out and she said, Jade, I can't talk to the trees anymore. I was quiet for a second. I said, where did the trees used to be? And she goes, well, outside of me. I said, where are the trees now? And you could just watch it on her face where she went, (laughs) inside of me. (laughs) And I said, right. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that place in yourself where you remember that this is all inside you, you can make those choices to shift and have more grace with others Mm. and and be in that place of allowance. So I want to point out that allowance doesn't mean you have no boundaries. You still have boundaries. You have yes and no's in your life experience. But allowance allows you to accept without judgment what is. And then from there, make a choice. Instead of being in the resistance. I was a resistance. I used to call myself a rebel. I call myself a free spirit now. You become what you call yourself. Um, and it's huge. You really do especially if you're going to pick a name. My birth name is Jade. And in Hawaii, we believe that you whisper your name into your parents' ears before you come into um, form. So I might have mentioned it. I don't know. (laughs) Mom hasn't told me if she heard anything or dad heard anything. In Hawaii, actually, the men usually hear, the Mm -hmm. masculine hear hear the name. So, you know, when we look at things in such a way that we are truly the creator of our experience by our response and that that choice of being. And people go, well, how do I get that neutral? And I totally honor that neutral is a long way for a lot of us. Um, My astrology friends get upset, but I have an Aries moon, the most juvenile energy there is as far as emotions go. So learning to mature our emotions. So I just look at it. If I go into an immature emotion feeling, I go, oh, this emotion would like some support to grow into a place where it can go to neutral. You can feel it for that 90 seconds, but it doesn't grab you and suck you into its Mm -hmm. vortex Uh. of pain. I mean, we're here to be done suffering. We're actually here to step out of Bodhisattva, which means we suffer for others. Mm. Like we take that on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, we're here to (laughs) step. No, I I feel like... um... The suffering for others has been a, a big theme in my, my life. I remember my, my healer friend that I told you about um, mm-hmm. looked at me and said, you have an affinity to homeless people for some reason. You need to let that go. And she thought it was one reason that I may not be allowing financial success in my life mm-hmm. because I felt bad that they didn't have it. You know, and there was some kind of affinity to these people that were not able to succeed, so why should I? Or why should I, you know, take mm-hmm. more of that on? And... um was I just telling you last night about um, th- 
thinking that in a past life. James is pointing to his wife. Yeah, that um, that I. Not our cameraman. You, my way, my wife, care. Um, there was something about we were in the car and I was talking about how. They're eating others. Eating so overeating because of a time of of a past life where I didn't have food. Mm-hmm. Where now that I have a chance to eat food, it's like hard to not just eat as much as I can, just like almost like put it in the pocket and take, because you don't know when you're not going to have it again. Mm. And I wondered if that is, because I've been asking myself a lot lately, where are these destructive feelings coming from? Is it this lifetime? Is it 12 and under that I don't recall right now? Or is it also past life experiences I still am not releasing from traumas that happened in the past? You know, um, one experience. A lot of our pain comes from the way that we died in past lives. Mm-hmm. We're holding on to those absolutely like uh, situations because it's always such a a shock to in that moment, and we into the next life, it's still there in some way. And just being honest and asking myself, trying to be open, like where is it? Like I'm asking, like where can I work on this? You know, and that's something I've been asking myself a lot lately. And with the food thing, I especially doing so. I did 30 days of the juice cleanse, mm-hmm. and then moving from that to eating again, and then watching how I react. And the destructive habits trying to come back in. And I'm just, I keep telling her I'm being a scientist and she thinks I'm not doing anything. <laughs> but I am. I'm watching. I, I might be eating it, but I'm going, I see you. Yeah, why I see myself this? making why that choice. Why are you doing this? Mm. Do it. Keep doing it. But why? I want to find it. It's almost like by doing it, I'm trying to figure out where is this coming from? So I have a question for uh-huh. you in my own experience. Mm-hmm. It's how does that change your state of feeling or energy? When I eat? When you eat. So I, I get mm-hmm. where, like, in a past life where you didn't eat. I mean, I had a dog that at five remembered a past life where she fell through ice because she slipped on a new floor, mm. and she refused to walk on floors. Mm. And when I went to read her energy, it was like, oh, she died falling through ice uh. as a dog. Mm-hmm. And so as a dog this time, she, like, would not... I mean, we had ru- scatter rugs all over the darn brand new floor because the dog wouldn't walk on the floor. Mm. Um, so, and you couldn't make her. There's, she was a 90 pound lab that had a mind of her own completely. So with the food, if you're changing your energy and your state, mm-hmm. and you're also changing what you can receive. So when, especially if we put in too much food, it's really hard to receive clear messages. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, if we're putting in sugar, it's a, in my experience, mm-hmm. it's a disconnector. And, and if we're limiting... So this is what 40, um, 42 plus years of changing my food over and over and over and over since I was 10 years old, mm-hmm. okay? Um, when we limit something, and it isn't like you're saying, you're not limiting yourself when you're eating whatever you're eating, um, but if you could ask, what is this change in me now? Mm-hmm. It might even take it further. As you mentioned, like past life things, mm-hmm. I totally agree with you when we've died in certain ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a daughter and a dad that have a have a birthmark in the same spot, which is very interesting wow. when you look at DNA. They have mm-hmm. the same shape birthmark in the same spot. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder how you come in on the same line of yeah. people. Um, I was 33 when a huge realization came in that our DNA not only carried the heredity's look, like we learned in, in science class for mm-hmm. me in seventh grade, you guys probably in third, um, but um, that it carried the emotion and mental constructs of that because mm-hmm. no one had, I'm a very specific being and if someone doesn't tell me that that's there too I don't even think about it being there mm-hmm. but I, I gotta ask which daughter are you talking about because that might have been TMI about your dad for me oh it is TMI for you yes it's that daughter <laughs> I knew I was gonna. He's gonna get this really soon, and he's gonna be like, "I didn't want to know that. I just thought it was funny." The picture had been coming in for like twenty minutes, and it had to come up in the conversation to see how pink you could get today. Um, Not to share it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't I, say I where the it was. That again. Oh, that'll be way. fun. Okay, where were we before that? Had to come up. You were talking about. I like when you said when you eat food, it becomes harder to receive the messages. So then I started wondering, am I trying to block messages? Or, and then, but then I also took it on, and this is not trying to put it off anybody else. Is there someone trying to, 
is this something happening to me? Is there other energy trying to make me do this to block messages so that I'm not clear to bring in messages? Or are people pulling energy from you? And because of that, you're putting more energy into you so that when they pull energy from you, you're not mm. totally depleted. Mm. So, I mean, there, there yeah. are multifaceted places to look at this. And one of the things that could be taking energy from you is a thought form, a group of energy that comes together and creates its own sentient That's right. ness. That's yeah. right. You know, in the 1800s, back in the old mystery schools mm -hmm. in England, they would talk about thought forms and the power of oh. them. And I have literally had a man walk into a, a house of worship, come out after... <laughs> And he was raised in the same kind of house of worship, but he'd been out of it. So all of his guilt, shame, all of his junk came up when he walked in. And he came and he drew a picture of this ugly thing mm. and told me it was his fiance and that it was her. And I was like, this is a total thought form that he has created. He started throwing furniture around my, my yeah. office back in Colorado. Yeah. Wow. And I was like... I got into a commanding tone and told him that was enough, and yeah. he backed down. Now, he was probably eight inches taller than me and mm -hmm. 20, 40 pounds heavier. He wasn't a lot heavier mm -hmm. than me, but he was taller than me, and he was a guy, <laughs> stronger than me. Mm -hmm. And he stopped that, but he had created this monster mm -hmm. and projected it on his girlfriend, really of his own feelings. Mm -hmm. And when people do that to other people, they, they project those energies onto them. Unless you've got a way to clean your energy field up and hook your energy field up, you can be absorbing those things. I have, I have a client from Peru and she calls it, I've been soaking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I call it sponging, but I mm -hmm. totally get what you mean. You've been soaking it up. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, there are some simple ways to take care of energy. One is called the drain. It's creating an etheric drain. And I actually have it for free on my website. If you just mm -hmm. click on, what is it called? Pain Relief. Probably Empath Pain Relief. It, they're right there. The audios okay. are right there. There's no opt-in. There's nothing that anyone has to do. Because mm -hmm. people can't go find it later is what I've found. So I had to put it where they could just click, click, and it was there for them. So What's your website, though, so we know? Oh, my website is my name, J-A-D-E-R-E-H-D-E-R.com. Or to keep it simple, it's Love Light and Aloha. Dot com. So they both go to the same place. Okay. Awesome. Um, and there is the drain there, which is really just a step-by-step -step of creating an etheric drain and filling yourself in with the purest golden light. And then there's something called soul sourcing, which is my number one way to create a sovereign field. Mm. And um, that took me a lot of years to figure out. It's actually five different people's stuff put together into one form. Mm -hmm. um, some people go, a lot of that's about Qigong. And I go, cool, but I also want you to change your receptors to receive from your own light and wisdom. True. And that, if not, you're receiving, like you're just talking mm -hmm. about, James, from what is around you and the collective that is projecting on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could go way into covert energies and say that there sure. are things that feed sure. on other energies. But man, if we're taking care of our own energy field and we're working as that sovereignty, um, we have a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I have asked that question about food for years. That thought form you're talking about, I mean, obviously you've read the Alice Bailey books and yeah. the Agni Yoga books. I mean, that's what they're talking about. They go, when you become enlightened and you can actually see the cloud-like thought forms that are not just, you thought they were just these fuzzy things flying by. And when you start to actually clear your mind and you actually, wait a minute, that's a real entity. That's not just a cloud of purple color flying by me. That is real, and that there are that is a a, a world that is real to us mm -hmm. within us. That you know, when you explain it that way, that's one hundred percent. Yeah, and I I'm I see as my fourth gift. I feel, know, and hear really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, I've been told if I saw what I knew, felt, and heard that it would be too much for the psyche. I said, well, mm -hmm. that's a limiting belief. <laughs> um, yet, <laughs> if I ask to see, I see. And sometimes I see without asking, mm -hmm. um, especially if someone is holding a lot of um, low vibrational thought forms, they look mm -hmm. gray. They just look gray and matted to me. Like they've mm -hmm. got this whole, like pig pen, mm -hmm. like from Charlie Brown, like they've got this mm -hmm. swirly, whirly stuff happening to them. And I'm like, oh, wow. It, I just go to, go to love and be like, wow, you know, hopefully they find whatever they need to move through, whatever that is. 
Are you physically seeing? I am. That? Okay. So I am. Is that like um like an aura or is that? Yeah, but more of a thought form construct. Okay. I'll see people. We when we awaken and we awaken many times, people will act, and some people mm-hmm. do have like one yeah, yeah. awakening. You know, it happens like that for some. I've always, my, my ascension coach was like, you were never asleep. I go, I acted it. I acted really asleep. Mm-hmm. Black, white, wrong, right, wrong, my way or the highway. Mm-hmm. And I would say it to you after I told you not to let the door hit in Ocole Keystone. on the way out. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I went to Hawaii and I'm like, Hawaii. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I would, I would say those kind of things and mean it like from this aggressive programming that I was running Mm -hmm. that was right, wrong, good, bad, that I call the northern na. And it and na in Hawaiian means calm. (laughs) In Hawaiian, na means calm. It was such a great reframe. In the north, na means no. That's what I took it as. It was a na, na, (laughs) na. They sounded like sheep. (laughs) Sheep. 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 The cumulative U. (laughs) E W E. (laughs) Don't be one. Wake up. No longer asleep. Allow your dolphinness to shine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wanted to kind of throw something about what you were saying about eating real quick. Go for it. <laughs> Is that uh, one of the things I learned, like when I stopped smoking cigarettes and all these other things, you know, I've done to myself to learn from, like you're saying, yeah. you're trying yeah. to figure it out. Um, I realized that the you burn out in a car. It takes a minute to catch, let the tread catch. And the the amount of burning out that needs to happen before you catch is proportionally balanced by your your willingness and ability to stay with it. And I feel like you will get what you need to get through once you once you learn it. You know, it's a self-weaving mm-hmm. basket concept that I keep mm-hmm. thinking of mm-hmm. where if you're going to hold that important water, it's only going to hold right when it's done weaving. Mm-hmm. And so you're in the process. Yes, and you were talking about living it versus thinking it, and that's something I've been talking about a lot with you and with Kara and other people is, you know, for when I was 19, I was having these thoughts, but I always felt like no one wanted to hear it then in a sense because I was 19 and nobody wanted to hear me talking about higher levels and consciousness because I hadn't lived it yet, and, you know, you're talking to a 50-year-old person, they're like, what do you know, kid, you know, in a sense, and you have to be those ages and, and live through, but now going into my 40s, you know, be 43 this year, I'm starting to understand what they meant by living into it, where no longer am I just theorizing 100%. I think you and I actually hit this when we were talking about, when I asked you about uh, negative aliens and do you believe they could be attacking us and different things. And I said, it, it seemed like you were like rationally like going for it. And I was like, oh, oh, that's right. I don't think about it. I feel if it's true. And then you said, oh, that's, that makes sense because I try to stay away from my feelings you said at that moment you know, and you're using the mental which let's just say that you know at 31 years old 30 you know and I'm 40 this is that difference of time that comes with time as my mom said she said I don't care about what I care about in my 60s that I did in my 50s or in my 40s you have different movements so I know now in my late 30s into my 40s I'm learning how to live these theories well, time and work I'm working on yeah yeah. Well, and I would well, say the that, work in. and like yeah. I've been doing for all those years, I was, I have been too, and I'm finally feeling that I'm living them, where, where I just come in as the beingness, you're talking mm-hmm. about being, beingness is all they talk about in Agni Yoga, it's about beingness, and these are the thing, concepts that I had other names for as a young kid, but now as I read this stuff, oh, people have been figuring this out for a long time, and, <laughs> and I'm, I'm just on the path, as many people have been in this world. Well, and time is less relevant at this juncture of evolution Mm -hmm. in my experience. Um, I have a 23-year-old mentee who woke into her darkness at 8, woke into her light at 18. Uh Okay? And I woke into the awareness of my darkness and my light at 33. So there's no judgment in time Mm -hmm. basis. It's really interesting when you really get into that stuff and go... This is irrelevant. Because mm-hmm. I had a, a co-worker who I was actually celebrating. Oh, my gosh, you're so young. And mm-hmm. she came to me later, and she goes, I'm really upset with you. I was working at a crystal room up on Mount Shasta. I'm really upset with you. And I said, what are you upset with me about? Well, that you were saying that I wasn't 
able to be as awake as I am because of my age, I said, no, darling, what I was saying, I was really excited for you being as awake as you are at your age. Mm. You just took it in the construct of how others have put mm. it to you. Mm. So it, it, she restricted what I was saying, and I, and I had to look at it. I had to go, was I in the energy of, you can't possibly be that awake? Uh-huh. Or was I in, it was like an 80-20. There was about 20% that was like, hmm, that's very aware for like 24 years old sure. compared to, I mean, if I compare. So that's the thing, everyone, that comparison energy right. is one of the contracting energies of this planet. Can you feel it go flying through my field? Um, <clears throat> so we think it, we feel it, and we act on it. The continually acting on it, mm-hmm. which is what... Miles is talking about being in practice with it. Mm-hmm. See, I, I, I've walked out of processing. The reason I do the modality of transcendence that I do is because people were dying from unprocessed energy in their bodies. Uh, and some uh, of the old ways I totally honor, but they have you processing mentally and emotionally continually. And if you don't get that stuff through, you create dis-ease of energy, and that can create dis-ease in a physicality. Uh, right. And you're talking about those musicians who are doing it. They are probably bringing in a lot of people's energy and weren't in a place to transcend it, to change its state. Mm. So here's the thing. Release. Release. I've gone, no, I've gone past it. I release this pencil. still in my field. If I transcend this pencil from green to gold, now the gold is in my field. Mm. Same exact shape. Transcend the energy into a Mm. new state of beingness. That's where magic happens. That's like what we're talking about. Say that one more time, and then... We got to go. Already? <laughs> Thank you, Z. Already? <laughs> Say that one more time for a, okay. uh, it might be a two-hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> so when we release something and just let it go, we leave it in our field of energy. If you turn it over to your source, you're changing the state. You're moving it from you to source, a higher consciousness of you. But the magic for me really happens when you actually take and you change the state of the energy from where it is to your highest consciousness. So instead of being a green pen, this would be gold. Instead of this mm. being lead in your field, it would be it would be alchemized higher vibration of your consciousness. So mm. that's where magic happens for me. Mm. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Um, I mean, we can keep rolling, Miles. I really want to hear your story. But well, it was just in reference to, it was me hearing what she was saying and reiterating it. Within okay. a quick oh, example. Oh, in new words, go. Different, oh, the same. Go, 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 go. Like, yeah. like, like when we're on tour, there's a tour miles. And I've really been trying to cultivate this tour miles to, be, to bring myself into this new place, the alchemized miles. Um, and one of the things I do is often when I'm, when I'm out in the world to try to not be paralyzed by, aware, by the awareness I frequent, becoming an aware paralegic, is, um, is I try to... Work with my ability to stand in. My, okay, okay <laughs> I did that on purpose. Well, it, I, know. I, I try to work with my ability to stand in my greatness, because there's a lot of energies and and entities and vibes that will want to curtail and hurt and quash um, positive lights in life. And so one of the things I've learned to do is to inhale my greatness. Walk by people who I know. Uh, will yell randomly or maybe stab someone, you know, um, if you're big in your in yourself. And so I've learned to bring that in when I'm walking. And I've learned to cultivate the, I'm just, I'm very small, I'm just someone doing this. And to, um, to learn to do that. I, I forget exactly the connection it made to what you were saying. But well, you were alchemizing your field from being big yes. and possibly sharp to some. Yes. To, and, and so I totally honor where you're bringing it in. I would the go to neutral or maybe, maybe peaceful. I wouldn't make myself small. Yeah. But yeah. I totally get it. I've been in yes. those situations where you're on a street where you're like, whoa, I didn't know I was going here. Yeah. Um, and then you just you, you bring it in so that you're not overwhelming yeah. or mm-hmm. triggering people. Yeah. But if you bring it to neutral or peace, normally neutral. they just kind of, they, they just keep going. Mm. But you can feel them before you get there. Oh, yeah. So there's a way to practically use that personal alchemy. Yeah. Well, we definitely need to, uh, you know, book you again for yeah. four or five months down Please. the line. Sure. We'll get uh, you it locked in because we'd love to 
Is your website the only way that people can get a hold of you? Is there more? You can find me on YouTube under my name, Jade Raider. Uh, Awakened Empath is the other piece of that. You can find me on Patreon with my backslash name. There's a whole bunch of free content there too. Um, and if you're a Facebooker, my missions page, which they call a business page, is my name, Jade Raider. So that's where you find me. And if you search K-L-E-A-R, clear, that's what I do the vast majority of the time. And awesome. next time you're not allowed to talk about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> There's no more good stories Uh-oh. like that, Zach. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. I got to run. Thank you, Sun Yoga, Wen Lung, and, of course, Jade Raider, uh-huh. our master energy alchemist. Have a good day. And thank trip you, Z. Fo- and trip the photo guy. Thank you all. Yes. Uh, we hope. Everyone. <laughs>